Hello, everybody. Welcome to New Concept English Book 3, Developing Skills. I'm Leo from the English Department of Peking University. It's a great pleasure to be with you in this video course. I hope you'll find your study a fruitful one. 大家好,下边就由我来为大家讲授新概念英语第三册。第三册的标题是 Developing Skills 就是说这一册的学习者应当具有一定的基础才谈得上发展和提高 what skills should you develop? Briefly speaking, it's language proficiency in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. 熟练地掌握这四项基本技能目的是为了提高我们常说的语感。我们还是会从一篇一篇的小故事开始。就像这套教材的作者LG Alexander强调的,一篇有趣的故事 可以提供一个活的语言环境。这样我们学习到的就不是孤立的字词,而是语言在具体的交流环境当中的实际应用和语言后边潜在的文化信息。Because language study should, after all, enable us to know a new culture and ultimately give us a broader mind. 因为语言是交流的工具。而交流毕竟是文化的交流 But now, let's start from the very beginning. Lesson 1. A Puma at Large. This lesson is about an escaping puma. 这一课讲的呢, First, listen to the text and see if you can answer this question. 首先,请大家听一遍这个课文,看看能不能回答这个问题。Where must the puma have come from? 这头美洲狮究竟是从哪儿逃出来的? Pumas are large, cat-like animals, which are found in America. When reports came into London Zoo that a wild puma had been spotted 45 miles south of London, they were not taken seriously. However, as the evidence began to accumulate, experts from the zoo felt obliged to investigate, for the descriptions given by people who claimed to have seen the puma were extraordinarily similar. The hunt for the puma began in a small village where a woman picking blackberries saw a large cat only five yards away from her. It immediately ran away when she saw it, and experts confirmed that a puma will not attack a human being unless it is cornered. The search proved difficult, for the puma was often observed at one place in the morning and at another place 20 miles away in the evening. Wherever it went, it left behind it a trail of dead deer and small animals like rabbits. Paw prints were seen in a number of places, and puma fur was found clinging to bushes. Several people complained of cat-like noises at night, and a businessman on a fishing trip saw the puma up a tree. The experts were now fully convinced that the animal was a puma. But where had it come from? As no pumas had been reported missing from any zoo in the country, this one must have been in the possession of a private collector and somehow managed to escape. The hunt went on for several weeks, but the puma was not caught. It is disturbing to think that a dangerous wild animal is still at large in the quiet countryside. So, where must the puma have come from? 注意,这里用的是 must have come from. Must, 
but must have happened or must be indicates a probability based on logical reasoning. 就是说，表达一种推断或者猜测。我们再回到这个问题 ：Where must the puma have come from? The text tells us that the puma must have escaped from a private collection. 这头美洲狮一定是私人豢养的。这个结论呢，是在有了很多线索之后做出来的。整篇课文给我们讲述的也是越来越充实的证据 ，accumulating evidence。讲述的也是专家们由不太当真 ，not taking it seriously， 到不得不去调查 ，feeling obliged to investigate， 到最后完全肯定的一个过程 ，fully convinced。那么这些证据究竟有哪些？又是怎么影响了专家们的看法？请大家在学习中理清课文的这些脉络。Now let's look at some language points in the text. 下面我们来看一下课文中的语言点。A puma at large. Be at large. 这是一个固定词组，词义是潜逃。It means A dangerous person or animal, having escaped from somewhere and may cause harm. 它呢一般是指危险的人或者动物从什么地方逃了出来，并且会造成伤害。For example, the escaped prisoners are still at large. 逃犯还没有落网。这篇课文在几处都出现了表示看或者看见的词语。Now look at these sentences. A wild puma had been spotted, forty-five miles south of London. People who claimed to have seen the puma. The puma was often observed at one place. 表示看见这个意思 ，see 是最常用的词，而 observe 要比 see 更加书面化。Spot. Means to notice something very difficult to see, or find something being looked for. 它呢表示看到了不太容易看见的东西，或者发现了正在寻找的东西。For example, I spotted someone coming out of the building. 我看见了有一个人从楼里出来。As the evidence began to accumulate. Accumulate means to gradually increase over a period of time. 这个词指的是逐渐增加或积累。Experts from the zoo felt obliged to investigate. Feel obliged to do something. 这是一个固定词组，经常呢用来做书面语。It means must or have to. Or have a duty to do something because of a rule or law or a situation. 就是说，必须或者有责任、有义务做什么事情。For example, I felt obliged to invite him. 我觉得必须邀请他。The hunt for the puma. Hunt. 我们最熟悉的词义是捕猎。但课文中的意思呢是搜寻 ，search。那么我们来看看这些例子。Go on a deer hunt or go on a fox hunt， 意思是猎鹿或猎狐。The hunt for the remains of the Titanic， 这个例子里头的 hunt 就跟课文里一样是搜寻的意思。那么这个例子的意思呢就是寻找 Titanic 的残骸。Hunt for second-hand books, 寻找二手书，就是藏书家们喜欢说的淘书。表达搜寻的意思呢 ？Hunt 还可以做动词使用。For example, job hunting, 找工作。Picking blackberries, pick 在课文中的意思呢是采摘。For example, pick cotton. 摘棉花 
Pick 这个词有很多层意思。在这个例句中 ，We need to pick someone reliable 是挑选的意思。我们需要找一个可靠的人。那么英文中有一个词组 ，pick and choose， 就是挑挑拣拣。A puma will not attack a human being unless it is cornered. Cornered means be forced into a situation that it is not easy to escape. Corner 的词义呢是陷入一个困境，被逼得走投无路。The search proved difficult. Prove here means turned out to be. 它的词义是证明是，原来是。在这种用法中呢，它是做不及物动词 ，intransitive verb. For example, the rumor proved false. 谣言被证明是错误的。当它做及物动词使用的时候 ，transitive verb， 它的意思是证实。For example, they proved her innocence. 他们证实了她是无辜的。Puma fur was found clinging to bushes. Cling to means to hold to something tightly, or to stick to something tightly. 这里的意思呢，就是粘在了树枝上。注意 ，cling 的过去式和过去分词都是 clung. Look at this example. His wet shirt clung to his body. 他的湿衬衫贴在了身上。But you can also cling to some belief, or idea, or feeling. 当这个词组呢后边的宾语表示某种信念或者思想或者感情的时候，它的意思就是固守、坚持。Now look at this example. She clings to the belief that her husband will come back. 她固执地相信她的丈夫会回来。Several people complained of cat-like noises at night. Complained of, 在句子当中呢，表示报告或者诉说的意思，反映的是一种不满的情绪。Complain 这个动词，它后边跟的介词不同呢，意思也会相应变化。Now look at these examples. Complain about the weather. 这个例子当中 ，complain 的意思是抱怨天气不好。Complain of a headache. 这个例子里头 ，complain 是诉说自己头疼这种情形。You tell somebody that you have a headache. It's disturbing to think that a dangerous wild animal is still at large. Disturb 这个词，我们最熟悉的意思是打搅，就是 interrupt. For example. Sorry to disturb you. 对不起，打扰你了。或者我们在饭店的房间看到的悬挂的牌子，上面会写着 "Do not disturb." 请勿打扰。但是在课文里 ，it means worrying. It is worrying to think that a dangerous wild animal is still at large. 就是令人不安，令人担忧。Look at one more example. His strange behavior disturbed me. 他举止反常使我很担心。大家都知道，英文中呢最基本的句型就是简单句、并列句和复杂句，就是我们经常听到的 simple sentences, compound sentences, and complex sentences. 这篇课文呢主要是由复杂句构成的。Now please look at one of them. However, as the evidence began to accumulate, experts from the zoo felt obliged to investigate. For the descriptions given by people who claimed to have seen the puma were extraordinarily similar. 要理解一个复杂句，最重要的呢是搞清句子的结构，然后通过连接词分清主句和从句之间的关系。就是说，要把握主句和从句的位置。而主句跟从句的关系呢，是由连接词来判断的。
。在这个句子当中，主句就是 experts from the zoo felt obliged to investigate。主句前边有一个 as 引导的从句，它表示的呢是一种伴随主句同时发生的状态。它的后边呢，又有一个 for 引导的从句来交代原因，而这个从句当中有一个 given， 它起的实际上是一个定语从句的作用，用来修饰 descriptions。如果用从句来表达，就是 which had been given by people。而这个从句当中又套着另外一个从句，是由 who 来引导的，用来修饰 people。所以，一个句子的结构不论有多么复杂，只要我们能把握连接词在句子当中的作用和意思，就不难理解。So please review the complex sentences in the text and see how the link words work in those sentences. 最后呢，我要讲一点：当英文中表达一个事实的客观性的时候，往往更多的使用被动语态。这篇课文就是这样，因为讲的呢主要是美洲狮在各处出现并且被人目击的情形。我们来看看被动语态在课文当中的使用。A wild puma had been spotted. The puma was often observed. Paw prints were seen. Puma fur was found clinging to bushes. No puma had been reported missing. 这几个例子当中呢。Had been spotted, was observed, was seen. 这都是被动语态最基本的构成。但是这里 was found clinging 和 had been reported missing 是在被动语态之后呢，又加上了现在分词 clinging, missing， 起一个补充说明主语的作用。Right, that's about the language points in the text. Before we call it a day, I'd like to expand a little bit on the topic of this lesson. 在我们结束这一课之前呢，我想就这一课的话题再说几句。课文告诉我们 ，the puma must have been in the possession of a private collector. 这个让我们知道了，原来西方呢还有收集动物的人。但是在今天的中国呢，养宠物已经成为一件非常流行的事情了。英文中把养宠物的人叫做 a pet person。你要是问到他 ，Do you have a family？ 他会告诉你 ，Yes， we have a daughter， a son， and two dogs。在西方，宠物的概念可能比我们理解的还要宽泛一些，有时候甚至包括 wild animals。但是野生动物如果在城镇的周围出没，像课文中讲的那样，还是非常危险的事情。但是西方有一些环保主义者，他们反对把动物关在笼子里。环保主义者的英文就是 environmentalist。Environmentalists don't think that wild animals should be kept in cages。于是西方国家中会有专门的 game park， 或者叫 game reserve， 就是专门辟出来的野生动物园。Game 在这里是野生动物的意思，还有各种保护濒临灭绝的动物的组织 ，organizations to protect animals from extinction. Okay, so much about this topic. I'll see you in the next lesson.